We're continuing with uh, the BC Taylor series uh, review worksheet number two. This is number nine here. Uh, let f be the function given by f of x, sine of 5x plus pi over 4. Let p of x be the third degree Taylor polynomial. For f about x equals 0, find p of x. So for part a, we're going to build our Taylor polynomial using Taylor rule formula, which is the summation from n to k of the nth derivative evaluated at c over n factorial times x minus c to the nth power. So we're starting off with f of x. We know we have to write um, up to the third degree, so we have to find up to or down to the third derivative at least. So uh, we're going to find the derivative um, all the way down to the third derivative. So the derivative for sine of u, okay, and the u value is um, all these uh, all the terms inside the parentheses. The derivative for sine of u is going to be cosine of u times u prime. So 5x derivative goes to 5. Pi over 4 is a constant, so it goes to 0. So 5x or 5 plus 0, or just times 5. And the next step, the second derivative, the derivative for cosine of u is negative sine of u times u prime, so times 5 again. So I'm just going to attach it as 5 squared, 5 times 5. The, the first 5 is from the previous derivative, and then uh, each time we're going to keep adding another multiple of 5. Uh, the derivative for negative sine of u is going to be negative cosine of u times u prime, so another 5. So now we can evaluate each of these derivatives at the center, which is going to be a 0. So plug 0 into each of the function and its derivatives. So sine of power 4 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of power 4 is root 2 over 2 times 5. Negative root 2 over 2 times 5 squared. Negative root 2 over 2 times 5 cubed and these are um, um, the 2 and the 3 are exponents they're not radicals they're not um, roots alright so we can now build our Taylor polynomial which is going to be we know the first two terms is just going to be a tangent line equation so root 2 over 2 plus 5 root 2 over 2 times x minus now we can build our uh, rest of the rule here so negative 5 squared root 2 over 2 uh, all over 2 factorial x squared negative 5 cubed root 2 over 2 over all over 3 factorial and if we clean this up we get root 2 over 2 plus 5 over 2 over 2 and then 5 squared over 2 times 2 factorial 5 cubed root 2 over 2 times 3 factorial x cubed so there we have our Taylor polynomial um, in the third degree Part B, find the coefficient of x to the 22nd in the Taylor series of f about x equals 0. So what we could do, it will take a long time, but we could keep on going down until we find this 22nd derivative. Or what we could do is, um, a much uh, more efficient way, is notice that uh, uh, each of these derivatives is going to cycle through these four uh, series, these four patterns. So we just have to know which pattern the sec 22nd derivative is going to land on. And the way we do that is we can just um, take 22, divide by 4, because there's four um, options for uh, four variations of, the, of, the, uh, of these uh, derivatives. And we look for the remainder. So 4 times um, 5 will give us 20. So 22 minus 20 is going to be 2, so remainder 2. So uh, remainder 2 is going to be this third option, right? If it's remainder 0, that means we're we'll starting off here, and then uh, first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, we'll go back to the zeroth, um, um, uh, to the original functions t um, pattern, and then fifth derivative, sixth, seventh, and then uh, if we keep going down, 22nd is going to land on the second derivative. However, we know that because we're going all the way down to the 22nd derivative, um, uh, this uh, we're going to multiply by uh, a number of factors of 5 and it's going to be 5 to the 22nd also we're dividing by n factorial so the n factorial is also going to be inside the coefficient so divided by 22 factorial so we know our pattern is going to be uh, negative 5 to the 22nd root 2 over 2 all over 22 factorial and so we have our um, negative 5 to the 22nd power root 2 all over 2 times 22 factorial. Alright, part C. 
uh, says, uh, use the Lagrange error bound to show that uh, the absolute value of f of 1 tenth minus p of 1 tenth um, is less than 1 over 100. So again, uh, to review Lagrange error bound, what we're doing is um, we have the third um, um, we have the third uh, derivative, um, or the th uh, third degree uh, Taylor polynomial, which is just an approximation. So if we were to find, use that approximated uh, Taylor polynomial to find the value at one tenth, it'll only be an approximation. However, if we compare this approximation, whatever this value is, if we compare this approximation with the actual function evaluate one tenth, which we don't know because we don't, uh, um, we're not able to work all the way down to uh, infinite number of terms. But uh, Lagrange error bounds tells us that if we were to compare uh, the difference um, between uh, the, the approximation and the actual value, the approximation is going to is not going to be off by no more than this remainder. Okay, and th and the way we find the remainder is we take the n plus first derivative and we try to find the maximum value that this can take on divided by n factorial divided sorry divided by n plus one factorial so it should be n plus one n plus first factorial times x minus c to the n plus first so whatever value we found here we know that our polynomial is not going to be off by more than this amount Okay, and the way we find this amount is we need to uh, go to the fourth derivative evaluated at z. So if we find the fourth derivative, that means we need to go down our derivative step one more time. So negative cosine of u times u prime. Uh, negative cosine of u becomes uh, sine of u times u prime. So we have another factor of five that we have to include. So if we were to evaluate uh, the fourth derivative evaluated at zero, it'll give us 625 root two over two. Um, but our range is going to be between one tenth and zero. So if we were to plug in one tenth, we're going to get another variation of this number. But however, if we want to try to find, we, we just want to find a safe upper bound for the fourth derivative. So no matter what value we plug in for the fourth derivative, it's always going to, because we are dealing with sine and cosine, it's always going to oscillate between negative one and one. So the largest value that this can take on is going to be 625 times. Uh, a fractional value that is between um, um, 0 and 1. So we know the maximum value that this could ever be will be 625. So if we use 625 to represent the fourth derivative evaluated at whatever uh, z value, uh, then we, we have a safe upper bound. So if we're trying to find the safe upper value um, to uh, produce our remainder or our error bound. So we'll replace the fourth derivative evaluated at z with 625 divided by 3 plus 1 factorial, so 4 factorial. And then our x value is going to be the x value that we see here, so 1 tenth minus the center. The center is going to be 0, um, as given to us in the problem here about x equals 0. So 1 tenth minus 0 um, and will be 1 tenth. 1 tenth to the fourth will be 1 over um, 1,000. And if we take this, multiply by 625 over 4 factorial, we get 1 over 3 to 4. And we know 1 over 3 to 4 uh, um, will be the maximum error. So we know that this polynomial is not going to be um, off by um, more than 1 over, 3, 1 over 3 to 4 if we were to compare um, uh, between the polynomial and the exact value, which is going to be um, safe because 1 over 3 to 4 is less than 1 over 100. And we, that's what we want to show. We want to show that the difference between these two is going to be uh, less than 1 over 100. All right, part D. Part D says, let g be the function given by g of x equals the definite integral from 0 to x of f of t. Write the third degree Taylor polynomial. So we have f of t, which you need to find the definite integral from 0 to x of f of t. So f of t is given here, or our third degree Taylor polynomial. So we're going to take the definite integral of that. So we can go through power rule. So root 2 over 2x. And then uh, 5 root 2 over 2 times x squared over 2. Um, 25 root 2 over 4 times t cubed over 3. And here we have our third degree um, Taylor polynomial for g about x equals 0. Okay, next problem, number 10. 
Um, number 10 says the function f has Taylor series about x equals 2, converges for uh, f of x in, in the interval of convergence. Uh, the nth derivative is given here. The nth derivative value at 2 is n plus 1 factorial over 3 to the n. For n is greater than 1, greater than or equal to 1, f of 2 equals 1. Find, uh, write the first four terms and the general term of the Taylor series. So for part A, we're going to build using our Taylor rule. So um, will be the summation from 0 to k of the nth derivative evaluate at c over n factorial times x minus c to the nth. So we know the first two terms. It's just going to be um, equation of the tangent line. And then we can build the rest of the Taylor um, um, polynomial. So the second derivative evaluate at 2 over 2 factorial. Sec third derivative evaluate at 2 over 3 factorial x minus 2 cubed. Okay. So we know f prime of 2. Uh, all we need to do is to plug uh, the respective n value. The nth derivative is going to be the first derivative, so plug 1 in for n, so 1 plus 1 is 2. 3 to the first power is 3, so 2 over 3 will be the coefficient in front of the uh, uh, variable. The second derivative value at 2, so plug n in for 2, um, plug 2 in for n, so 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 factorial over 3 squared, all over 2 factorial will be the coefficient in front of the x minus 2 squared. Uh, third derivative, evaluate 2, so plug 3 in for n, so 3 plus 1 over 3 to the third power, or uh, 3 to the third power, so 4 factorial over 3 to the third, all over 3 factorial, so on and so forth. So what happens is um, if we try to create a general term, it'll just be the n plus first derivative, so if n is 3, it'll produce n plus 1. So if n is 4, it'll be produce n plus uh, 1, which is 5. So uh, we know the numerator is always going to be n plus first terms derivative uh, factorial. So um, we have to uh, add 1 to um, the original n value divided by 3 to the nth all over n factorial. And if we bring the n factorial up to share the same denominator space, it'll just be 3 to the n times n factorial x minus 2 to the nth. So we have our general term, which we want to make sure that we don't forget. Okay, so then if we to clean this uh, expression up a little bit more, we can bring, uh, we can uh, undo these complex fractions by bringing the uh, denominator up to share the same space as the uh, denominator in the numerator portion. And then 3 factorial over 2 factorial, which is cancel out to be just 3. So we can 4 factorial over 3 factorial, which is going to be 4. n plus first factorial over n factorial which is going to be n plus 1. So we have a cleaned up version of our um, third degree Taylor polynomial as well as the general term. For part b, find the radius of convergence. So all we care about is the radius convergence but we still have to go through um, ratio test. So ratio test, we have to, we're now using our general term. So limit as n approaches infinity uh, of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. So uh, a sub n plus 1 means that we're going to add 1 to each of the n values. So n plus 2 over x minus 2 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 divided by a sub n, the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So times 3 to the n over n plus 1 times x minus 2 to the n. Note if we clean this up, um, the x minus 2 to the first power will cancel, or to the n will cancel out, leaving us with just x minus 2. 3 to the n over 3 to the n will cancel out, leaving us with just 3. The n plus 2 over n plus 1 will just go to 1 uh, degrees match, so we just take the coefficients. So we know the, uh, the series will converge as long as the absolute value of x minus 2 over 3 is less than 1. If I multiply 3 to both sides, I get absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 3. The 2 is uh, representative of the center, and the 3 is representative of the radius. So we know the radius convergence is just going to be 3. If we were to go further and find the potential integral convergence, then we will say x minus 2 is between negative 3 and positive 3. And if we add 2 to each of the um, numbers here to make this middle term x, then we have between negative 1 and 5. But we don't have to go this far. We just have to show the radius convergence, which is 3. All right, part C. Uh, let uh, g be the function satisfying g of 2 is equal to 3 and let g prime is equal to f of x. Write the first four terms of the general term of the Taylor series for g about x equals 2. So we're told that um, 
of the Taylor polynomial that we just found rep is representative of g prime. So if we want to get from g prime to g of x, we can just find the antiderivative. Um, so the antiderivative of our Taylor polynomial that we found here is what we're going to apply here. So the integral of 1 becomes x. The integral of 2 thirds x minus 2 becomes 2 x minus 2 squared over 2 and then 3 in the denominator. Uh, x minus 2 squared becomes x minus 2 cubed over 3 with the coefficients in front and then we have a plus c. Now if we want to find that plus c value we were given uh, order pair 2 3 so if we plug 2 in for all the x's I get 1 plus 2 sorry um, I'm going to get uh, into this expression here okay into this expression um, if I plug uh, 3 in for um, uh, g of x and then 2 in for all the x's, uh, all the terms will um, uh, will go away because of the x minus 2's, leaving me with just going to be 2. So 3 is equal to 2 plus c. If I solve for c, then c is equal to 1. So if I put the 1 in front, um, in front of the x, I get 1 plus x and, uh, and then the rest of the terms here. But if we want to clean this up a little bit more, uh, so the pattern will be more, um, uh, uh, will be a better fit, we can force this x to be x minus 2. Now, if I force this to be x minus 2, I need to make sure that I don't change the overall expression. So if I make this x minus 2, I have to make sure I add a 2 to this one in order to make this, um, make this, uh, um, this value unchanged. So 1 plus x is the same thing as 3 plus x minus 2 because we know 3 minus 2 is the same thing as 1. So we haven't changed the expression. We've just rearranged it uh, so that uh, we have um, a, uh, an equation uh, where we can see a nice pattern. And if we were to write it in this form, we can see that this is going to be a geometric series, right? Every term is going to be multiplied by x minus 2 over 3. 3 times x minus 2 over 3 becomes x minus 2, times x minus 2 over 3 becomes x minus 2 squared over 3, and then so on and so forth. So we know that this is actually going to be a geometric series. So part D says, does the Taylor series for G um, as defined in part C converge at x equals negative 2? So if we can recognize this as a geometric series, then we can use that information to help us find our interval of convergence. We know the um, uh, we know a geometric series uh, will converge if the ratio is less than 1. So the absolute value of ratio is x minus 2 over 3 is less than 1. If I multiply it by 3, I get x minus absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 3, which tells us that um, if we were to set this up, um, we know our interval of convergence will be between negative 1 and 5. And because the interval of convergence is between negative 1 and 5, we know negative 2 does not fall in that interval, so therefore we know the series do not, does not converge. Even if this were asking if the series will converge for x equals negative 1 or 5, we know the endpoints will never converge because we're dealing with the geometric series. Okay, so that's another piece of information to keep in mind.